Frogman Friday. Yeah, boy. Welcome to Frogman Friday. I'm Ryan Birdman Parrot. Today, our badass guest is Carlos Mendez, a.k.a. Los. He served 22 years as a U.S. Navy SEAL, both enlisted and officer, exiting service as a lieutenant. After retiring from service, he took a position at Echelon Front, whose mission is to educate, train, mentor, and empower leaders and organizations to achieve total victory. You can follow Carlos on social media, handles to follow the show. To learn more about Echelon Front, go check out echelonfront.com. Brother, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. It's been yeah. a long time since I've seen you last. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's, I was just saying this before we got on. It's, uh, it's quite funny how we went to Buds together, which was 2003, and you haven't aged at all. <laughs> I mean, whatever you and Mario Lopez are doing, you got to send it my way, dude. <laughs> yeah, oh my well, God. I'm sure I'll start getting gray hair soon. Like you and I were talking about my kids in high school now, so it, it's coming. Well, I'm going to keep following and watching as that goes. And hopefully you do get some gray hair because I got it all over. So let's kick right into it. So you get out of service 22 years. By the way, I had no idea that you converted over to the dark side and went off, sir. That's awesome. Good for you for covering on all bases before getting out. 22 years of service. You get out. Start me right there. What does exit look like? And then what do you start doing? Yeah, so um, I felt like my transition was was fairly smooth I guess as smooth as it could be um I kind of knew what I wanted to do I'd always really been into finance my undergrad was in finance and I just didn't know you know what in the field of finance I want to do because it's so broad and I settled on investment banking um I really gravitated towards them they were very type a people just super driven super intelligent people so um I became an investment banker I went to business school got my MBA at UCLA and became an investment banker in LA. And to be quite honest with you, I, I really liked it. It's really fast paced, uh, high pressure. Um, you, you're working like 90 to 100 hour weeks. And I, I really enjoyed the actual work. I just didn't want to do it, you know, for 20, 22 hours a day. And throughout my time there, you know, I had a couple of TBIs while, while I was in the service. And, you know, I would have migraines every now and then, but I started noticing that my migraines were becoming more and more frequent because there were definitely nights where I would go to bed at three, four in the morning. Heck, dude, there were, there were nights where I didn't go to bed at all. Um, I would, I, I, my presentation was due at 5 a.m. and I turned it in at 5 a.m. and we would present it at 6 a.m. You know, New York time is, is nine. My wife would actually, you know, we have a sleep number bed. She would actually show me She's like, it says you haven't been to bed like in two days. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so I, I knew it wasn't something I wanted to do long-term. And around that time, JP Donnell, you know, he, he'd been reaching out to me. He's working at we're at Echelon Front. And I didn't exactly know what they were doing over there. So, you know, I'll be completely honest. I was a little bit hesitant. And uh, one day he reached out to me and he told me that they had a client whose employees, over 50% of them only spoke Spanish. So he was like, hey, dude, you know, I know you're fluent in Spanish. Can you please come out and help me? And I told him, I was like, JP, you ever seen that movie Office Space? That's me. I have eight bosses, Bob. <laughs> and I have to ask every single one of them for, for some time off. You know, but JP being as persistent as he was, and then you know how we all are. If it's one of our brothers, we'll go help him out. So I took a day off to go uh, help him out. And, and by the way, a day off is still you checking your emails and still pulling an all-nighter because of all the work you missed during the day. So I went out there. Uh, most of these people that were there, you know, they didn't want to be there. I could just tell. Most of them didn't know who Jocko was, didn't know what Navy SEALs were. And like their rock star foreman showed up like three hours late. And I'm just like, oh man, this is not good. So I start speaking, you know, I'm going through the whole uh, keynote and towards the end of the day, this, this foreman that had showed up late, he's like, Hey, I'm really sorry. I showed up late. He's like, I thought this was going to be some BS. He's like, can I come back tomorrow and do it again? I was like, sure. And by the end of the third day, like I just saw these people, they had all these notes written down. Um, you know, during the debrief, they were sharing all the different takeaways. And it was then when I realized like, wow, these, 
these people are really making an impact. I guess all these lessons that we had learned in terms of leadership that, you know, we'd put out at trade ed, the four laws of combat, whatnot. I, I took them for granted because I, I heard them as a young man. And I just thought that that's just the way we do business. And then when I realized that the actual application to the business world and in life and in the impact it made, it, it was a no brainer for me. So I, I came over to Echelon Front and uh, working with, you know, other team guys has been phenomenal again. And uh, it's awesome because after I do something with a client, I get messages from them afterwards telling me, hey, you really changed the way that I actually looked at leadership. I didn't know what leadership was until then. You know, CEOs sending me messages like, hey, you've really changed, you know, the culture here. And I tell them, hey, I didn't change anything. I just presented the tools and you guys are the ones that are actually made the changes to your company and whatnot. So, yeah, it's, it's been an amazing experience. It's uh, I've had a sense of fulfillment again which I hadn't had since the teams, to be honest with you. Um, Cause even though I liked, you know, investment banking, like let's be honest, building financial models and PowerPoint till three, four in the morning, isn't like the most fulfilling thing in the world. So yeah, man, pretty happy. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, that's a huge shift. I mean, it gets you back not only with a team, but the right team, the teams in general. Uh, so that's, you know, that's one thing that I've always, you know, since Echelon Front started, because I remember talking to Leif when they were just kicking it off and he's like, we're doing something pretty cool. And he didn't really get into it too much, but I was like, okay, well, I figure those two, uh, Jocko and Leif getting together again after service would have been something dangerous or something really cool. So that's awesome. Okay. So, you know, tap in a little bit more to what you do at Echelon Front. So I'm a leadership instructor with them. So we do anything from one hour keynotes on Zoom to what we call field training exercises. And uh, dude, I'll be honest, that's actually my favorite thing. And I thought it was going to be like the cheesiest thing because I'm like, oh, man, we're going to put these people through little missions and they're going to think they're SEALs. And I don't want to try to teach people tactics in one day, but it's actually not that at all. And the, the client feedback has been phenomenal. Like that's actually been their favorite event like people who have gone to like a muster have seen a keynote and then gone to the ftx they're like hey the field training exercise was by far my favorite event and i think the cool part about it is you know yeah we're, we're giving them little fake scenarios missions to do but what i've realized and i tell them like hey we're not here to teach you tactics we're not gonna make you navy seals or commandos in one day it's just taking all these tools that we've shown you and being able to apply them because what are, you, what are you ultimately doing if you boil it to the simplest form? You're getting you know, 25 to 30 people and you're taking them from point A to point B and then bringing them back. So basically you're influencing people towards a common goal. And the groups that do the best are the ones that are able to take these concepts, implement them, and we see them real time and we'll debrief and then we'll tie it back to their businesses. Hey, how does this apply in your business? You know, And, and we'll debrief that and we'll talk about that. So those are some of the things that we do at uh, Echelon Front. Wow. So you, I, I know that you've had the muster and I, and I know that <clears throat> I've seen a lot of key, uh, keynotes of JP's done several and um, I've seen everybody speaking. So at a muster, do you get FTX or field training exercise as well? Or is this a different side of the company? Is it an all-inclusive or can you pick and choose? How does that work? Yeah, so it's a different program. So I'm still fairly new to the company. I've been with them since July now. Um, and the muster is, you know, a two day event where anybody can come, individuals can come the field training exercises. It's, it's a whole different event that we have. And traditionally, from my understanding, they've only had it for, for corporate clients. So, you know, a company would come to us and say, Hey, you know, we want to put 25 of our people through. And so we would do that. And it wasn't until recently where the, um, the demand was there for individuals to want to do it. So we actually just finished our third into what we call the individual field training exercise, where it's people from different companies on their own wanting to come. So that's actually really, really cool because the people that come to those have, have read the book, have probably already been to a muster. They know the laws of combat. They're paying their own money. So it's not their company. They're paying their own money to be there. So they're fired up and we do two days of training exercises with them. And, you know, they meet with other leaders from other companies, other backgrounds. So it's pretty cool to see them come together, 
implement those laws, build those relationships in a short amount of time and carry out these missions. Right on. So then it, the field training exercise, I've seen, you know, when I've seen you guys go out to do these things, it seems like you've done a lot in Michigan. Is that a place where you do the FTX or do you place them all over the country? How does that work? So we've done a lot in Michigan because we, one of our biggest clients is up there. Um, okay. So we fly up to Michigan a lot to do them, but uh, we do them wherever the client is. So we'll find uh, airsoft, paintball field, wherever it is that they want us to go. And we'll do it there <clears throat> for the individual FTXs. We try to do it by geography. So we've had a lot on the West Coast and we've had a lot of demand on the East Coast. So we're planning to bring the FTX, the individual FTXs to the, somewhere in the East Coast as well to make it more accessible to people. Yeah, very interesting. I asked that because I'm from Michigan. So I'm like, what uh, in the world are y'all doing in my home state without <laughs> me? I didn't get a pretty awesome paintball park up there, dude. It's, it's really cool. Is it? That's sweet, yeah. man. So, okay. And now obviously being in the military and then being in the special operations community, there's a degree of leadership that everybody has a responsibility to take on. And then speaking as well. Do you feel that you float into being a keynote speaker quite well, or is it a, a learning process for you? Because most team guys, I know they get in front of a camera or an audience. And they're like, uh, <laughs> so, and I'm sure that you're killing it. So how was that transition to becoming a speaker? <clears throat> Uh, I, I think it's always going to be a learning experience. Um, I'm going to say the field training exercises have been the easiest transition for me because I feel like I'm a trade it again. So, uh, you know, I used to be an instructor at trade it and, and I loved it because you're basically just talking about what happened. You know, you're running a scenario and then you just debrief. And I feel like that was very natural to me. Um, first time I stepped on stage, it was a little different. Like it's a learning experience for me as well, or, or being on Zoom. I think being on Zoom is uh, a lot more nerve wracking than I thought it would be. And then especially when you're using some other platforms where you can't see the audience. And I'm just like, I can't read. I can't read their faces. I can't read their body language. Like, are they, are they paying attention right now? Um, and then afterwards I'll get the feedback like, man, that was great. That was phenomenal. I'm like, well, that's good because I had no idea what was going on because I couldn't see them on the other end. But yeah, it, it's been a learning experience for sure. And then, you know, you've been in the military for so long. And so you're, you're used to using acronyms, certain verbiage, uh, the style that you speak in. You kind of, you've got to tailor it a little bit to the civilian world. And, and at the beginning, it was a struggle for me, you know, because I said, oh, when I was at Trade It, I'm like, what's Trade It? Oh, I'm sorry. It's the training detachment where we actually teach, you know, platoons and task units on tactics and leadership before they deploy or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's funny. I have a story about that too. I did a lot of speaking because I realized after service that my weapon, my, my most powerful weapon was my voice. And if I used it correctly, then I could actually engage with the audience to tell them about what we actually do at our cause and all that stuff. So, but I did do a zoom call. Cause obviously for me, I'm not a public speaker. I just do it for the cause, but it dried up completely during COVID except one call. And it was a zoom call. It was my first zoom call and I feed off crowds. So when the crowds are speaking to me, I get fired up. If I see somebody falling asleep, I try to not look at them anymore because that's going to get me upset and down. <laughs> like I'm kind of spilling my guts right now and you're not paying attention. But the funniest thing was on zoom. They had me in that deal where there's probably like a thousand people on the call, but there's only three people I could see right up at the front and the specific person in the center she, uh, she looked at, she just looked down the whole time and I'm like, okay, she's totally not engaged, but she's right in the center of my screen and I'm looking at her the whole time. So I'm trying to look off of it and I'll send, she drops off the call completely. And I'm like, okay, I'm feeling really good about myself. So anyway, this is not about me, but that was just, it's so funny. Cause you know, I look to guys like you, cause you know, officers, you're definitely a leader at that point in the SEAL teams. You run the show, you get out, and now you're being you're doing a public speaking thing and you're influencing people on how to be better leaders. That's an important thing. Um, and so I really love that side of the house. So you do field training exercise, you do public speaking or speaking for uh, at the musters. What else do you do at the musters? Tell us a little bit more about that. So the musters are, like I said, it's the two-day event and it's different instructors teaching different portions, whether it's you know, building relationships or barriers to taking ownership of your problems. Obviously, we cover like the importance of leadership, the four laws of combat, 
the mindsets for victory. And I'll, I'll be honest, I've only been to one. So the one coming up in Vegas uh, at the end of this month, that'll be my second one. And I'm still just observing those, but you know, it was a pretty amazing experience for me to go, to have gone for the first time. I was taking notes the whole time. I mean, the energy is incredible. I mean, it's, it's like a sporting event, dude. <laughs> I, I was actually taken back by the energy that was in that room. I mean, cause people they're paying their own money to come there. They want to come there because they want to become better leaders. They want to improve as human beings. So they're there cause they want to be there. You know, and then uh, the jujitsu at the end of the day never hurts that I'm surrounded by a bunch of team guys who love to do jujitsu. So uh, I had to give that up in my investment banking life because there was no time for it. So it's been nice to, to be able to do that again. But yeah, dude, it's an incredible experience. <clears throat> I'd actually love to have you come out and, and, you know, join us for one of these one of these days. Actually, we have one in Dallas next uh, next year. Is that so right? Right in the neck of your woods. Absolutely, man. Ooh, I don't know. It might be a little far for me, but yeah, I think I can swing it. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, I mean, I've I've heard a lot of guys saying, dude, it's yeah, absolutely insane when they go to them. And I feel like to be in part of Echelon Front, you have to not only be a team guy, but you have to do a ju either jujitsu or Muay Thai. Like you have to be a fighter in some way, shape, or form. Because I'm like, every one of these dudes are doing it, have been doing it. It's not just. It's like a prequel. Super cool stuff, um, dude. That's awesome, man. I'm. I've we have never actually served in the same platoon, but I've always admired you. You've always been that calm and collected guy, smooth criminal, if you will. Uh, no drama. You had zero drama. It was just, you're a guy I always looked at as like, I want to be that dude's friend. So it's cool to see what you're doing these days post-service, man. Um, I hate you for not aging. I'll say that again and again, <laughs> and I'm super happy for you, man. So Thanks, I appreciate it. It's awesome seeing you again after all these years. Yeah, dude, for sure. Well, we'll keep the good times flowing. You're definitely going to see in Dallas for your muster. Um, and we're going to put out all the information on how to follow Los right after this. So if you want to learn more about Echelon Front, go to echelonfront.com. Check him out. Field training exercise is his uh, department right now. And you'll probably be seeing him on the circuit speaking. So just keep following uh, Carlos and yeah, keep kicking ass, dude. Awesome. Thanks a lot for having me, brother. I appreciate it. Always, man. We'll talk soon, huh?